investors, and welcome to my YouTube channel, where I study the best investors and businesses from around the world. Today, we'll learn from William Green, who wrote the fantastic book, Richer, Wiser, Happier, How the World's Greatest Investors Win in Markets and Life. William Green's new book, Richer, Wiser, Happier, offers an immensely alluring promise. By learning the secrets from great investors, from the famous like Charlie Munger and Manish Prabhai, to those who deliberately fly below the radar, like Nick Sleep and Laura Gertz. We too can be as successful as they are in business and in life. The best investors are worth studying as they are practical philosophers, those seeking worldly wisdom. In this video, I'd like to introduce all the investors William Green studies and summarize the main takeaways from each investor. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, Manish Prabhai. Close the best ideas and investor habits. The first investor Green profiles Manish Prabhai, who says his strategy is cloning. He finds a strategy he admires, and he copies it. Lancis does a similar thing, but he says he isn't trying to replicate anyone else's behavior. You can't mimic them because you're not them, he says. Learn it and adapt it and modify it to your own process. Key takeaways from Parai. People have a defect in their DNA where they feel shameful stealing the best ideas of others. Don't be those people. Clone the best ideas, but be open to personalizing it to your personality and context. Whenever you come across a principle that is correct, but the most of humanity doesn't understand or isn't willing to follow, make the most of it. It's an enormous competitive advantage. Number two, Franklin Templeton. To get different results, you have to do something different than the rest. Green confesses that he didn't really like Templeton. I saw in him a cold austerity that I found unnerving, he writes. He also notes that many great investors might be somewhere on the autism spectrum. After all, it's easier not to follow the herd if you don't care what the herd thinks. Key takeaways from Templeton. You have to have the inner calm, willingness, and disregard of what other people think. You have to be okay with being lonely, different, and misunderstood for long periods of time. These investors favor winning and being right rather than sticking with the crowd. Beware of your own ignorance, diversify broadly, have great patience, study the abysmally performing companies and industries, don't chase fads, focus on value and not outlook. This is why mastering yourself is of supreme importance. Number three, Howard Marks. The future is ever-changing, and it is your job as an investor to prepare as well as you can. William Green recounts how Howard Marks, the co-chairman of Oak Tree Capital Management, which manages $120 billion and specializes in less well-trodden areas of the market like distressed debt, keeps in his wallet a folded $5 bill that he found in the Harvard Business School library as a reminder of the limitations of the efficient market theory which states that $5 bills don't lie around waiting to be picked up. The experience helps remind him to avoid the most efficient markets and focus exclusively on the less efficient ones. Marx, who has been a student of Buddhism, which has led him to admit that he can't predict or control the future, as a result, he says, he is more humble than he might otherwise be. Key Takeaways from Marx be humble, and know that you are never immune from the forces greater than you. Or, said another way, understand how big the role of luck plays in your success, and the biggest takeaway when it comes to investing is to ask, how cheap is this asset given what I think the value is? Don't worry if it's sexy or not, just look at the value. Number four, Jean-Marie Avillard. Don't be in a rush to get rich. In the late 1990s, Jean-Marie Avillard faced the investing equivalent of a near-death experience. Amid the insanity of the dot-com bubble, 
He refused to buy any of the overvalued tech, telecom, and media stocks that were enriching more carefree investors. His most prominent mutual funds, Sojin International and Sojin Overseas, lagged the market disastrously for three years running. Evelard was equipped to outperform over the long haul, avoiding all tech stocks in the 90s. He underperformed for years, lost most of his investors, but didn't budge. He was eventually proved right, seen as a sage, and funds rushed back. This takes great fortitude and the right temperament to go against the crowd. Key takeaways from Elvillard. Don't be in a rush to get rich. The key is safety capping your losses. The gains will take care of themselves. It is all about surviving the dips. That's the first step. And of course, even better is the ability to take advantage of them. Number five, Joel Greenblatt. Simplicity is key. Joel Greenblatt, the founder of Gotham Capital, says the entire secret of successful stock picking comes down to this. Figure out what something is worth and pay a lot less. Or as Benjamin Graham, the inventor of value investing and the intellectual forefather of Buffett, Munger, and most investors in his book, said, make sure you have a margin of safety. Key takeaways from Greenblatt. Take a simple idea and take it seriously. Seek to reduce the complex to its essence. Only true understanding allows for this to happen. And if you're able to find a cheap and a good business, that is the holy grail of investing. Number six, Nick Sleep and Quias Zachariah. Focus on the things with the longest shelf life, not the ephemeral or short-lived. Sleep and Zachariah believed that business founders were the world's best investors. Only founders had the confidence to hold on to their shares through thick and thin or many decades, no matter how committed. Individual investors would struggle to hold for this time frame. He also believed that the best founders were driven not by money, but by purpose. Money was just a fringe benefit of their success. This is why Sleep often invest almost all of their money in just a few stocks, namely Amazon, Costco, and Berkshire Hathaway. Key takeaways from Sleep and Zachariah. When investing, do rigorous destination analysis, which is aiming to understand where the company is, where it can go in 10 years, and what would help it get there or veer it off course. This type of inversion or reverse engineering is widely helpful in all areas of life, like where you want to be at the end of your life and what you can do today to help get you there. This might mean that you'll have to sacrifice today so that you can have a better tomorrow. Number seven, Tom Gaynor. The best investors build habits that compound over time. Tom Gaynor's success is defined by his investment strategy or his technique of value investing. Gaynor considers himself a node in a massive neural network. He cultivated relationships and has many people helping him and rooting for him to succeed. The compounding of goodwill. Takeaway from Gaynor. You don't have to be extreme to get extreme results. So don't let perfect be the enemy of good. A good enough habit you follow is far superior than a perfect habit you don't. Number eight, Charlie Munger. Aim to be consistently not stupid. Munger's approach of solving problems backward was influenced by Carl Gustav Jacobi, a 19th century algebraist who famously said, invert, always invert. That is, think of everything you could do to guarantee failure and then reverse it. Do the opposite. Yes, it's counterintuitive, but it really helps you to reverse the given issues of actions. It's a more complete way of thinking the problem through. Takeaway from Munger. Inversion is a really powerful thinking habit. Before trying to help, first ask how you might harm. You must have great clarity on what not to do. In other words, collect stupidities and learn voraciously through the mistakes of others. 
Number nine, Arnold Vandenberg. Don't give up and persist through hard times. Arnold Vandenberg was my favorite investor that was profited by William Green's book, not only because of how he survived the Holocaust as a child, and this had a tremendous impact on his view of life, but because his resilience and persistence. He's such an extraordinary example of how to win a losing hand and how to construct a life that's not just financially successful with a successful business and great returns over a long period, he also built a successful family, a successful marriage, and successful relationships. Key takeaways from Vandenberg. Being rich consists of money, happiness, and peace of mind. Use your wealth to help and serve others. As you can probably tell, I highly suggest reading this book to try and get a glimpse of what the world of investing looks like. Thank you for watching this video entirely to the end. Nothing helps me out more than y'all sticking out to the end, so thank you again. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Also, if you enjoyed this video, like the video and subscribe to my channel so that I continue to make videos like this for you to enjoy.